you hear these extreme measures that China is taking to try and prevent the spread of COVID, zero tolerance, as they call it, you also hear about some of these ideas that somebody got this through the mail. Does that sound at all plausible? No, it doesn't sound plausible to me. It sounds like a lot of theater. They also uh, overnight culled um, more than 2,000 hamsters in Hong Kong and uh, other mammals and are banning the sale of mammals as pets because there was presumably someone who contracted the virus from, from a hamster. Look, I don't think that this is sustainable. I don't think that they're going to be able to keep the virus out. They're playing whack-a-mole with it right now. It's a large country. There's a lot of people coming in and out. And one of the um, things is that they've restricted severely the ability of people to come in and out of China, including their own citizens. Once they normalize some of that, um, some of that movement, they're going to have this virus come into that country. And I think they ought to be thinking about how to deploy effective vaccines, get more people vaccinated, because there is some inevitability that this is going to spread around the world. When you say effective vaccines, are you including Sinovac among them, the Chinese well, vaccine? Well, look, the data that's come out, yeah, the data that's come out recently has demonstrated that that vaccine doesn't hold up well against Omicron. So even, uh, that's also true in the United States. We've seen our vaccines um, have diminished utility, but that vaccine in particular, the live virus vaccines that China initially deployed, seem to be even less effective against this new variant. So they're going to need to reformulate those vaccines, as other, co other countries are going to need to as well. Um, but it's going to be a bigger enterprise there trying to get that entire population revaccinated with a vaccine that's going to be more effective. They probably have very little residual protection against Omicron from the vaccines that they've deployed. I mean, you're talking about 1.4 billion people. We, we look at the problems we've had here with getting enough tests, with, with getting enough vaccines, with making sure that there's enough of the new treatments coming out, including from Pfizer and other companies. I mean, what, what happens when you ramp that up to such a larger population that does not have the same sort well, of natural immunity from having as many people getting it? Yeah, that's right. Look, they've shown a, a better capability to systematize the delivery of these kinds of things, including the ability to get mass, po mass portions of their population tested. So if they have a more effective vaccine, I think they're going to be able to roll it out uh, with some efficiency. Right now, they don't have that. I do think China, probably among countries in the world, is the most vulnerable to COVID right now, because to your point, they've had very little spread within the country that we know of. And I think we would see it if there was more spread. Outside of Wuhan, the prevalence is very low, so there's not a lot of immunity in the population. And they've deployed vaccines that are going to be far less effective against Omicron. So they are very vulnerable. At some point, they're going to have to normalize travel. They can't keep restricting the ability of their own citizens to travel out of the country. They can't keep creating impediments for people coming into that country, or else they're going to see their economy suffer. So I do think they're going to have to normalize some, some level of travel. They probably have more spread right now than they're detecting. It does look like Omicron is starting to break out in certain parts of that country. It's not clear they can keep up with it. This is a highly contagious variant. Um, and they know what we know, which is once it gets into a densely populated area, it becomes very hard to control.